Um, what are some sort of uh, techniques, some sort of like way, the major, uh, major ways that uh, the Rudd Center goes about solving the problems of uh, unhealthy eating, obesity, and weight stigmatism? I well, guess just like I'll give you an example. <clears throat> um, recently, healthcare reform was signed, I mean, you know, over the past year, health care reform was signed into law by President Obama. Part of that health care legislation was a stipulation that restaurants, chain restaurants, provide calorie information on their menus and menu boards. This is already occurring in New York City and some other places, but this will now be a nationwide effort as a result of this law being passed. We were involved in this in a variety of ways. Uh, one is we did studies. Uh, particularly studies done by a graduate student uh, in our department named Christina Roberto on the impact of menu labeling and found that it had a beneficial impact on choices that consumers made. We were also heavily involved with New York City when uh, they were sued by the restaurant industry in order to stop the menu labeling stipulations. Um, we we're also involved in consulting with legislators in Washington about what the particular language might be of this bill. And so the, the work we do goes all the way from science to public policy, but we, we try to be helpful to opinion leaders and to um, policy makers at every step, every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you say is like one of, one or I guess a few of the major accomplishments that uh, the Red Center has had so far? Well, I think we've contributed to making obesity a national issue. Um, we ha have been quite involved in things that are now part of, will, or will soon be a part of everyday life, like menu labeling in restaurants. Um, we have championed the cause of controversial, but um, increasingly uh, likely pieces of legislation regarding things like a tax on sugar sweetened beverage, a soda tax. Um, and we've been very involved with policies regarding nutrition in schools. So these are all areas where uh, changes in policy can make a big difference. And I believe the Rudd Center has, um, has played an important role in the national debate in providing science to help support public policy priorities. Uh, and just in keeping these issues in the, uh, in the, in the eyes of the public. Um, as director of the Rudd Center, what are your, your certain, what are certain uh, roles and responsibilities you have? Well, we have a, a, a center teeming with bright, energetic people. And these include lawyers, uh, economists, nutrition experts, uh, psychologists, and people across a variety of disciplines. And one of my jobs is to help uh, direct that enthusiasm and energy in constructive ways. So um, I work with the team in order to help set priorities. Um, I try to keep our eye on the goal, which is to help change public policy. Uh, and I, you know, I'm involved, of course, in raising money to continue to support the center. So my, my goal is to help steer the ship, um, but all the people working on the ship are really quite good and doing excellent work themselves. Okay, um, I understand you've been involved in a paper recently in um, the American Journal of Public Health about um, using attorneys generals to decrease obesity and, food and uh, change food policy. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are some what are some examples of uh, like kind of things that these attorneys general uh, can do? Well, people haven't really thought much of the, the attorneys general in the context of obesity, but they've been very active in other areas of health, particularly tobacco and smoking. Um, so one of the greatest victories occurred with, right here in Connecticut, with our former attorney general, Richard Blumenthal. Um, he um, announced an investigation in 2009 of a program the food industry had launched called Smart Choices, whereby the food industry set standards for itself about how healthy foods had to be or what sort of nutrient levels they had to have in order to be assigned a Smart Choices label. And then when the 
products met that smart choices, those smart choices criteria, then the industry could assign this label to its products. Um, the problem is that the criteria the industry set for itself were lax enough that foods like Fruit Loops and Cocoa Krispies could be considered a smart choice by industry standards. So Attorney General Blumenthal, under consumer protection law, uh, claimed that these, this symbol might mislead consumers into believing these products were healthier than they were. His investigation uh, was uh, publicized widely around the country, and it became known that other attorneys general were looking into this as well, and the industry shut down the program. I was very surprised that the industry did shut down the program, especially as quickly as they did. And this was an example of something the attorneys general can do. Um, they can help look into marketing and packaging price uh, practices with the industry, um, because if these practices do mislead or deceive consumers, then there's authority for the attorneys general in various states to take action. So I think they can be a pretty important player. Um. I also see that the uh, Red Center is involved in the uh, Yale Sustainable Food Project. Um, how do you think this project would affect agriculture globally, and do you feel like it's a good model for the U.S. and for nations around the globe? Well, we, we can't take any credit for the work of the Yale Sustainable Food Program because they're they're on their own and, and uh, certainly have, have done very well in that regard. Uh, I believe the work that they do is terribly important uh, because Institutions like Yale and individuals like Yale students can make a big difference not only in their own lives by making food choices, but in the, the overall world scheme. Uh, research has shown that meat production, for example, uh, is one of the greatest contributors to global warming um, for a variety of reasons. And so when people make uh, choices, and the Yale Sustainable Food, food Program is all about that issue, uh, then it can have an impact not only on them but on the world. So the Yale Sustainable Food Programs is one of the more prominent ones around the country on a college campus and has generated a great deal of attention and visibility to the issue. So I, I salute their efforts and believe they're doing very good work. Uh, what do you believe would be some major repercussions if America doesn't change its ways and the way it grows and consumes food? Well, that's a pretty easy question to answer. Um, first of all, because America, uh, to some extent, is helping drive what happens around the world, many more people are affected than just those in the United States. Um, more and more of the diets around the world are, the indigenous diets are losing way to Western diets with highly processed foods, imported foods and the like. Um, and these other nations are suffering increases in obesity, much as we have. So the stakes are very high here, and, and millions and millions of people are affected. Um, the, if we fail to act, then there will be rampaging rates of obesity and diabetes, and the other diseases related to poor diets, such as heart disease and cancer. Uh, the health care costs will be staggering, and will be especially difficult to tolerate in developing countries. So uh, it's pretty clear something needs to be done. Finally, the United States recognizes this, and increasingly countries around the world are recognizing it as well. And I see a future where bold action is both indicated and likely. Um, how do you feel people at Yale, and I guess just Americans in general, could help the Rudd Center uh, kind of push along Broad Center's goals in just their everyday life? Well, individuals um, have a more powerful voice than they believe. For example, a single parent can get the attention of a school board, the principal of a school, or a group like the PTA to mobilize to help clean up the food environment in schools. Um, when an individual writes to their attorney general and says, are you doing anything about the obesity problem? or rights to their senators or to their congresspeople. Um, these things get heard, and individuals can have a nice voice that way. And as you get multiple individuals acting together especially, then you have a strong voice, and then the political people who can make a difference 
will start to change the way the legislative uh, will change the way they do their legislative work, and then that can lead to big changes.